Hey guys, my name is Cidiac and welcome to episode 2 of our Transport Fever 2. Do I call it the Down Under series where I'm building my very own transportation company in the entirety of Australia. Now last episode boys, we got a bunch of routes set up. The mission last episode, the goal last episode was not to go bankrupt or just to pretty much make enough money that it pays the bills and breaks us even and gives us a little bit of profit left over to slowly start making some futuristic investments. Now things went really well. They went really well. We take a look at our years recently. We made money. We lost money, but it all depends on how you look at it. If you kind of take out our investments out of the equation, we actually made some pretty decent money. And what we do is we have a couple of food routes set up. Picking up grain, delivering it to the food processing plant, picking up the food and delivering it to Portland. Now that went really well and it kind of then paved the way for on the kind of, hold on, west coast right now. Our very own slightly bigger variation of it, Perf Line. Picking up the grain, the grain, grain. Uh, and delivering it to the food plant and obviously delivering it to Perth as well. Now, we're actually making quite a bit of cash and it's going really, really well. And we've got a challenge or a kind of goal I want to complete in today's episode, which might be pushing it a little bit. I might be trying to run before I can walk, but I do want to set up a train route. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit later. I just want to say right now, boys, if you're excited about this brand new series of building this huge transportation company in the entirety of Australia right now, um, smash that like button down below. Um, guys, if you're not already, subscribe right now. Don't rely on the recommended tab for giving you episode free. Subscribe so as soon as it drops, you get notified. Uh, and boys, hopefully we don't go bankrupt. Now, with the money that I've currently got, I'm going to use it to kind of invest in our current lines to try and make a little bit of additional cash. Now, before I can build a train line, I'm probably going to need at least a minimum of a million big ones. I know. Sounds ridiculous, but I feel like we could get it. I feel like we could get it. I feel like we're on the way to be able to do it. It just depends on where I spend my money wisely. Now, in terms of the train line, I want to kind of set something up. Like, for example, yeah, let me just choose these for an example right now. We have three oil wells here. I could link and combine them onto one train station. That's a lot of cargo I can then transport and take it to somewhere like the oil refinery. Simply back and forth, it's a decent enough distance where the money would be pretty good. But because it's a train and it can carry vast amounts of cargo, it will make a lot of cash. Then set a precedent for us and we can then sail off into the sunset. But I'm going to need a lot of money. It's a lot of money to build the train station. It's a lot of money to build the train tracks. It's a lot of money to buy the train. But before I can even do it, there's no point me building it in stages because as soon as I start building it, I will be paying for upkeep. And the upkeep could be so much that it puts us to the point where we no longer make a profit and we could be breaking even yet again. So let's take a look at our current lines then. Let's see where we can add vehicles to them and really, really start to invest. So these are our current routes right now. These are our current routes. If I sort them by balance, what makes the most money? Uh, the Portland grain and Portland, uh, and, sorry, Perth grain. These ones are the ones that make the, the most amount of cash. Now, if I take a look, let's start with the Portland, the two Portland lines. Portland grain and Portland food. So Portland grain picks up grain from here, drops it off there, then goes down here and picks up grain and drops it off there. Now, in doing that, you can see there is vast amounts of grain still on the two platforms. So by that logic, we have room to add more vehicles to them. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six. Is six too many, you reckon? I could always delete them and sell them. Can I, do I have enough money to buy six? Yes, I just spent 150,000 big ones. That will give us a total of 20 vehicles on that run. Now, I feel like that run is, is big, so them spaced out should work out in our favor. Now, the other run, the other line on this is our Portland food. There is a lot of food here currently right now on the platform, 70-odd. Now, this line picks up the food, drops it off to Portland, but on the way back, it picks up some grain and brings it back, so it kind of feeds this a little bit more. There's definitely room here to add more vehicles to it. So I'm going to add one, two, three. Three more vehicles on that one. 
and we'll see how he gets on. So that's an eight in total. Now we'll see what happens in the long run. You'd have to give it a while before it now all gets spaced out because obviously we now have to wait. We could add an additional platform and then spread this out, but it all depends. Once the vehicles are spread out, how backlogged they do become. If it becomes pretty backlogged, we'll kind of change it up a little bit. But this should now make us considerable amounts of additional money. So it looks like we're going to go into a little bit of debt for now because at the minute, we're currently paying for the maintenance of those vehicles. Those vehicles are yet to make us profit. They're yet to kind of drop the goods off. So this is quite exciting. We'll see how this goes. Now, this is all good. This is just a small variation of the bigger variation we currently have over here in Perth. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Because these are longer distances. Now, we can definitely add a lot more vehicles to these lines. Definitely add a lot more to them. And you can see right now, the Perth Green one is making the most amount of money, but the Portland one is paying for a lot of maintenance until those new vehicles drop off the goods. So, if we can get more vehicles on the Perth Grain run, that will make us more money in the long run. But the only downside to the Perth Grain one is, it's so far that you do lose a lot of money until you make money. Now, also, foolish of me, I built tram lines on these stops here. I can turn the tram tracks off. I don't know if that will reduce the maintenance costs. Uh, I also did it over here as well. I'm an absolute folio for implementing tram tracks on there. I did pay for them, which is annoying. But I don't know if it reduces the maintenance of it by removing tram tracks. No idea. No idea. But they're now gone. They're now gone. Over here is just a little kind of a stop, so there's no tram tracks involved there. So it would be nice then to implement more vehicles on the Perth Grain line. So Perth Grain, manage vehicles, and we'll go one, two, three. If I do three to begin with... Oh, not enough money. <laughs> I'm poor. I'm poor. All right, now do it. Still not enough money. How much are they? There we go. Uh, so that gives us a total of 20 vehicles on that line as well. So that line and our Portland Grain line have the exact same amount of vehicles, but we won't make as much money on the Perth one because of the distance they, they are spread out to. We need, we need more vehicles. More vehicles. Now, how much are those horse and carts, by the way? They're... Okay, they're 23,000. No wonder I couldn't buy multiples at once. No wonder I couldn't buy multiples at once. So it's a nice, simple little system now set up to earn more cash. Now, we also need to think about buying more vehicles for the Perth food line. There's a bit of food at the kind of platform now waiting. Uh, wrong button. There we go. Perth food. And we only have one vehicle currently on this. So if I duplicate you... And then duplicate again, and again. There we go. There we go, boys. I now have four vehicles on that route. Now, the only problem with this line is the huge slopes they've got to go up. I did say once I've got some money, I would delete them, then kind of flatten out the roads a bit more so the, the, the gradients disappear and the vehicles get to their destinations a little bit quicker. But until then, this is just how it is. This is just how it is. So I'm in this weird stage right now where we are paying more for the maintenance of vehicles than the money they're making. We gotta wait for them to circulate a little bit. That's all that's all we can pretty much do. So now we've just spent lots of cash. <laughs> we've just spent lots of cash. But I do expect, and can I reduce this down? Let's go for the last 15 years. I do expect our income, the blue bars, to get even higher than what they've been doing recently. And hopefully that is going to then pay or fund our train line route, our expansion into trains. We've just got to make sure that we have enough goods on all of the platforms or stations to be able to transport. That's what we just got to make sure that we've got enough of. We seem to have enough of it, but we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. So the Portland Grain Line has increased the amount of money it now makes. So as the Portland Food Line, it's also eventually going to start arriving the Perth Grain. Until those that line has all their vehicles drop the goods off. Perth Food, uh, it comes, it swings and roundabouts. You make a, a good amount of cash, but then the expenses kill you off. But with more vehicles on the route, we should see that drastically change. We should see it drastically change. So we're in a bit of a weird situation right now where we are playing a bit of a waiting game. 
But while we are playing a bit of the waiting game, we can now strategically look around the whole of Australia to pretty much find where the best place would be to implement a train run. Now, I'm not going to just look for a simple back and forth. Like, where do we see that original one here? Pick up, drop off. Oh, we actually can even use this one, which is a bit further away. Pick up, drop off. No, I kind of want to... I'm, I'm looking further ahead than that. Um, we have an ore line. We could pick up ore and then deliver it where? Down here, but there's nothing additional. I'm, I'm thinking like a two-stage process. But I've got to remember as well, boys, that I am working with steam trains at this point in the game. So I can't do anything too crazy. Uh, I can't do anything too crazy right now. I'm kind of dying around looking. There's some more ore up there. There's some coal up there. There's some oil there. There's some oil refineries there. Oh, there's some oil there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So what I could do, I could say, I mean, this is this is me now dreaming, thinking I've got like all the money in the world. But I could build a station here that collects three oil wells there. Build the line that comes all the way down and drops off to the two refineries. Then I can make it go down here, pick up from the three oil wells. And by doing that, it leaves this station over there time to kind of fill up. So when the train comes back, it's loaded. Pick up there, drop off there, and back again. Oh my goodness me, hold on. There's a refinery there, and there's a refinery here. So, pick up there, drop off. Pick up there, drop off. Technically, that's two drop-offs, which is two to one product. That one product can then be sent down to here, which is a one to one on the fuel. And then I have fuel, which could be delivered to many, many places. Many, many towns, many, many cities. Right, I think that might be the one. But to build that is millions <laughs> okay we'll start simple and just kind of pick up from here to drop off to there but at least we've got an extension of where we can go with it oh that's really exciting i could even go all the way down to here if i was like feeling really crazy but i'm not gonna go that far <laughs> i'm not gonna go that far right that's really exciting we're gonna treat that as our little kind of grindy route is what i'm gonna do right we actually now have three vehicles or three horse and carts ready to deliver food down here now, on the finances, we actually made a profit of 18 point... Well, we made an income of 18.9k. How much do these actually make? I think we've done this just right as well, by the way, boys, by not getting them kind of stuck in this line of traffic. They go back out that way. But I want to know how much they actually make. I don't actually know how much they make delivering the food to Perth. So, this will be pretty interesting. Where is the vehicle? Hello? Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. It makes... Oh, 10k! That's really good. Then obviously it will make money on the way back as well. Now we should have, yeah, two more on the way down. So another 10k dropping off there. Another 10k dropping off there. And then they'll go back, pick up some grain from here, and deliver it back over to there. Simple. Simple but effective. Now, in the whole jibba -jab, jab out of me talking right there, boys, look at how much our income has now climbed to half a million that year almost half a million this year should be pretty good as well and we made over a hundred thousand profit every year so could we now start thinking about potentially building this this train run we'll give it a go what we'll do is we'll first start by trying to connect these three as one so the station that i put down can load from all three so we'll kind of build the road and i'll make sure my player ownership is off on both and then we'll build the roads from these sides so if i kind of i don't want to try and build as minimal road as possible so that works there um if i do it then here so i don't want to spend too much cash is the thing i don't want to spend too much cash so if I go there, and then how much is that going to cost me? Eight, okay, it's still 21000 no matter what I did. I think it's the incline that you're kind of having to pay for. Get these then connected via the road. The main thing is the, the player ownership remains off. So, by that logic, I'm no longer paying for the maintenance of that road. Now, train stations i'm not going to build a train station just yet but i just want to double check that the cargo end station here can okay so if i placed it there 
it does touch all three, which is exactly what we need for it to work. But look at how much this train station is going to cost me. Well, if I do the side one, you could argue it's a little bit cheaper. You could argue it's a little bit cheaper because it doesn't terrain, uh, terrain too much. But the train tracks are going to cost me a fortune in the long run as well. So at least that's set up anyway, exactly how I need it to be. Now these, I would need the train station to be like on a diagonal like that. So if I do it like that, I can build a building on the opposite side and do a road to connect. So that's not going to be an issue. That will be fine. That will be fine. It's just running the train line all the way down. Now my next big one is, how expensive is a train going to be? So what I will do is I'll build the train depot and I'll face it this way and try and get on a little section where it's the cheapest. Um, 21,000 there should be fine, right? Yeah. So that'll face where the train line, uh, the train will completely pass it like that and I'll just kind of connect in. So if I was, to, say I was ready to buy the train. I can't buy electric, I can't buy diesel, I can only buy steam, okay? Now between the two, you can see the difference in prices. Ideally, you want to go for like the the, the the Borsig. It's got a lot more pulling power, a little bit more of a higher speed, more horsepower, but it's 329,000. Now, if I let me just say, worst case scenario, I bought the most expensive ones. Uh, cargo wagons, the tank cars right now. If I added one, two, that gives us a capacity of, of 10. So if I went for like a a 40 capacity, 1.5 million. That's worst case scenario, okay? Now, it's 1.5 million after I've built the train tracks and the stations. You see what I mean? You see what I mean by, by, when I said, like, I'm kind of like, how do I pull it? Uh, a bit too ambitious for episode two, but it, it's a huge risk. And if I get it just right, the rewards would be ridiculous. Ridiculous. They would. They would. They will set me up for future expansions for quite some time. Now, the lines themselves, are they still doing pretty good? They are still doing pretty good. They're all making profit, which is the main thing. They're all making profit. Now, on the year, right, obviously I spent loads of money there in investments. Wow, my money's rapidly climbed, hasn't it, boys? Look at that income there. Yikes. Right, I think then we should maybe... So I'm in two minds. It's a case of, do I start to build it now and then just suck up the fact that I'm going to be paying for the maintenance of it all? Or do I spend some money here on expanding my grain line? This perf one? I'm in two minds, which is the best way to go. The... Oh, this is a tough one, isn't it? I feel like, logically, I should invest it in the grain line because that will make me more money in the long run. But the impatient side of me wants to build the train line. And then I will probably would probably scrape together buying two stations and it will cost me a fortune to be the, build the train tracks. And then I have to wait like a million years to get 1.5 million to buy the actual train. See, that's the other side of it. So logically, I should be expanding these current routes. So manage vehicles, we're going to go one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm about to now buy ten vehicles for this line. Now, annoyingly, some vehicles will take a turn and go the opposite way. I will try and flip those round if they do so. But I think they're all going to go through this way anyway. Now, this this is an extra foot. Oh, hello, new vehicle. You say? Have I just bought the vehicles at the wrong time? I've just bought the vehicles at the wrong time. I could have just literally waited two more seconds. Pause. Oh no. Well, let me let me check these new vehicles. Cargo wise, they're free there's two new cargo ones. That carries five. That carries five. It doesn't carry the food though. What's the difference between the two? They're exactly the same. 
So they're exactly the same. The European covered. It's five. This it's one more speed. One more speed. Right. Same power. Apparently the emissions are less. How does that work? Does does the horse poop less? And it can carry one more cargo. Oh no. Oh no, boys. Oh no. Well, I've got a lot of vehicles on that line. There is now so many vehicles on that route. But that should make a lot of money in return. Oh no, do I now start replacing the vehicles with and one extra cargo? It where am I? I'm over here, yeah. It would make more money. But the expenses to do it is ridiculous. Like, let's say I did the food run. Let me, let me just look at the food run to begin with. The Portland food. Manage vehicles. If I replaced all of these with this, it would cost me 208000 What I'd get in return is there is eight vehicles. So there'll be an extra eight capacity on top of the line. There'll be one mile an hour faster. You know what? It's not worth it yet. It's not worth it yet. It's not worth it. We'll wait till the capacity goes a little bit bigger. We'll wait till the capacity goes a little bit bigger, boys. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll do that. Because we're about to get a huge payday right now for the additional vehicles on the Perth Grain Line. Where is it? Here it is. There is just so many on it. It's ridiculous how many there is. So... With that then, I'm so impatient, I'm going to start building this line now. <laughs> Here we go, boys. Here we actually go. So a cargo station. Now, I want to try and get this in a flat of an area as we possibly can. But also making sure that we also touch all three. So that there is the best probably area for me. I'm going to... Yeah, probably the best area there. So we'll go there. It touch all three oil wells. So place you in. There we go. There we go. So now the big question is... Train tracks. Do I build like this or like this? Because it is going downhill. Oh, what's that there? Is that a lion? Wait, this is Australia. Do they have lions? Um, now, if I build down like that, it does create a gradient either side. Or I can spend a little bit extra to kind of bulk it up so the gradient is not as much. But you can kind of see we're going to be hitting, see, we're going to be hitting some hills shortly anyway. I could build to there where it levels it off, which is a bit extra money. But it levels it. Now, I... In the long run, that works out for us. But it's what happens now after this point. Right, I'll invest the money there. Because there's there's zero to, to no gradient involved. Okay, there's zero to no gradient involved. But what happens here is going to be a quite a large gradient. Um, I would want to run the train line at least on that fashion. I could make it go round, which is going to cost more money and more time. If I pushed through, that's 800,000 because it's going to want to create a tunnel. Right, okay. So I'm looking at this. I reckon we should be looking at maybe trying to get up to that bit. So paying for that is 150 odd thousand, which the gradient now doesn't seem that bad. But it's still there. It's still there. Don't get me wrong. So pay for you. And then we now need to get to over here. Now looking at the gradient again, there's a few little bumps and stuff. That leading all the way over is 235,000. Uh, it's a long gradient though. So it would be a constant speed that they're traveling. It'll, they'll be speedier going back slow coming to pick up but they'll be empty on the way back up this way anyway so that should work out 
Wow, I've just spent so much cash right there in terraforming the land. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. So now i got to build the station here. Now this station will be set up as a two-way system. They'll eventually go through it. Eventually, obviously, we'll, once I get multiple trains, we'll have two lines on the train track. So I'm just kind of going for the basics to begin with. Um, the platform length doesn't really matter at this point. And two tracks. Oh, that's so expensive. It's so expensive. But what I reckon we do is we just keep it to... So I want it like that angle because it's got to bend around. And again, I'm trying to shorten the length of the train line. Oh no, this is expensive. This is expensive. Right, I'm just going to bite the bullet and go somewhere. We'll go here. 206,000. Oh my god. Now that is on a hill as well, which is even more annoying. Because this then has to gradient down. I've just realized this is on a huge hill. I won't get a refund for that, will I? Oh no. What I could do is... Not build a bridge, but it is a lot more expensive. That's going to be so expensive. The slope is too much there. But it is cheaper to build a bridge. Oh, I didn't realize we we're going on such a huge hill. Right. Do you know what? Delete this. I don't get the refund for it, unfortunately. Delete this back. And I want to see. That would be better. Building it like that. To get to this level. 268,000 is what we need there. It's a huge ask. Don't get me wrong. It's a huge ask. But that's what we'll do. That's how we'll do it. Oh, good God. This is expensive. I mean, I need, I mean I'm complaining now. I'm going to need 1.5 million to buy the, you know, the, the ideal train that I would like. But the thing I've got going for me is we've got a lot of vehicles. So they will eventually make us money. The only downside is I'm now paying maintenance and expenses for the railroad. Which this year so far is 37000 Less money I now make because I'm paying for the, uh, the upkeep. So let the vehicles come in anyway. These are making us 15,000 big ones every time they stop off. Depending on where they're coming from, obviously. But 15,000 big ones. And there's vast amounts of vehicles still entering in. So you can't complain too much. Now that's an 8,000 one because that one would have came from over here. But the money's definitely coming in, boys. It's definitely coming in. And in terms of lines, the Perth Grain has now become number one, baby. Only because it's got more vehicles. Like ridiculous amount of more vehicles uh, has perf grown since i started delivering food by the way is that a bit of a rocky one hasn't it is that a bit of a rocky one it's up and down up and down i think oh i just seen it grow a little bit over there but i think they're hindered by the huge cliff yeah uh right where are we with this we're just over here aren't we the the money is now adequate enough where we could oh i've just realized we haven't even connected in yet. So this is going to cost me even more money now. Right. To there. To there. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So building wise... Could I build the train station slightly sunken? It's only a few extra pennies. It's only a few extra pennies to get it slightly sunken. Because if you look at it in reality, this road here is sunken. Which should... I mean, when you look at this here, look, that is technically sunken as well if you compare it to the height of the hill. 
So that might be the way to go forward. That might be the way to go forward. All right. So let's connect the train track here. In. Not too much money for us. <laughs> Not too much money. And then we wait. Now, I don't want to get a bank loan because it's extra cash. If I cannot get the bank loan, it's extra money that we will make. But then again, how much are we paying for the bank loan? We're paying only 20 grand. Wait, well, you didn't see that, okay? You didn't see that. You didn't see that, okay? Obviously, you didn't see that. Uh, buildings, train track. There we go. So if I now configure the train station, obviously we're going to have an additional train tracks on this side with an additional cargo platform. So if I just build them for now, I'm very brave by doing this. But it's only because, obviously, I've got the additional revenue. Uh, additional loan, sorry. I'll build you there. So I'm kind of geared up for that two-track line system. Now, the road... Is going to connect into here and then this road is going to connect into there and that's enough where there where this train station touches both so I'm ready I can actually build the line right now the only thing I can't do is buy the train so if I get the line set up from here to here right now and we'll call it so what is it where is it near uh, oh no. Kununura. Kun Kununura? Is that how I pronounce it? People got mad at me last episode for the way I pronounced Melbourne. <laughs> I said it again, didn't I? Um, Kununura. Oil. No, it's crude oil, isn't it? Crude. Crude oil. There we go. Now, I think I pronounced it Melbourne because it, it, it looks like it says Melbourne. If you take the Mel off it, you pronounce that word born. In the UK, I'm sure there's a village like somewhere in Derbyshire called Melbourne. And I think we, we pronounce it like that. But people say it's not Melbourne. There's no R. Melbourne. Melbourne. Melbin. Melbin. Wait till you guys find out how I pronounce the, this, this place over here. Sidney. I'm just joking, I don't pronounce it like that. I don't pronounce it like that, okay? I don't pronounce it like that. <laughs> right, we now need, then, enough money to buy the train. And this should substantially change how the company then operates. It really should change how the company operates. Right, we're going to need a bit of cash. Now, I don't want to get another loan because it's just unnecessary expenses that I need to keep paying. It's just unnecessary expenses. But we have a train line set up. I would like to be able to pay to, ter to uh, terraform it also. It looks nice. But I wonder how bad this, this is going to... I wonder how bad the uh, the training is going to be like for the gradient. Now, if I didn't go for the, the Borsig and I went for the D1 free um there is a difference in price of 60 70 80, nearly eighty thousand. the eighty thousand is worth it isn't it it's just worth paying the additional eighty thousand to be able to get this engine and in terms of wagons the tank cars are 145,000 a pop now i don't want to buy a smaller version of it and upgrade it as we go in case it does lose money then i'm just losing even more money so it's a bit of a tough one but let's just say what's the smallest i would be happy to buy hold on the smallest i would be happy to buy would be a 20 capacity you reckon a 20 capacity will be okay that's nine hundred thousand. Right, that would be the goal. That would be the goal, 900,000. Now, by that logic, it's only one more loan, isn't it? That means I would have borrowed an extra a million dollars from the Australian government. Oh, we got boats. Oh, and a new engine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't show me a new engine. A new uh, horse, cart, drawn thing. 
Oh, don't show me a new engine. Right, I've borrowed a million in total right now. Well, three million in reality from the Australian government. They're the real winners here, boys. They're the real winners. So that is 700,000. Yeah, we'll stick to the Borsig for now. <laughs> we'll stick to the Borsig. So, one, two, three, four, which is a 20 capacity, is 912,000. Now, if I push it to one more, one million and fifty-seven thousand, which we could almost get. Do I just wait it out for that extra cart? Do I just slightly wait it out? I'm gonna get ready to buy it as soon as we do get that money. But we we kind of uh, hovering around it is the question. We're hovering around it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, you, you're teasing me right now. You're teasing me right now. Come on, you're so close. You're so close. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Oh, whoa, well, oh. <laughs> right, what are they doing? What are they... Someone drop off some goods, please. You know, we're, we're meant to be making cash in this company. We're meant to be making cash in this company, boys. Come on, you're so close. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Having this extra um, cargo carriage on there will make a huge difference. I was so close that I even clicked thinking I had enough. Right, come on. Come on. Come on. What? The numbers... Oh my goodness me. The number frozen for a second. Guys, we, they, oh, there we go. Got it. Right, shut up. We got it. Okay. We now officially have our first train. We now officially have our first train, which can only carry 25. Don't worry, though. We have nearly 50 on the platform waiting. Here we go. Here we go, boys. I want to know how much this train is going to make in one journey. This is it right now, boys. This is make or break. This is what this episode has been gearing up to from the very start. I may have just made a big brain move in buying and setting this up now. Or I may have made a fatal error that is going to hinder the company for quite some time. And it will going to take me a very, very long time to recover from. The gradient seems to be okay. There's a dude there, by the way. Just chill him. The gradient seems to be okay right now. It's doing 28 miles an hour. But it will start to incline as we get a little bit closer. But I'm keeping my eyes peeled on it, boys. I'm keeping my eyes peeled. We have literally got a train. We have got a train right now for our company. Right, watching the 28 miles an hour. The gradient's now kicking in. It's getting a little bit steeper. Little bit steeper. 27, 26, 25. You could argue we're slowing down for the station at this point. That was amazing. How much do you make? 335,000. It is only... We only celebrate when we know how much money we make when it's come back for the second time. Okay? That's when we celebrate. That is when we celebrate, boys. Because we've got to go back right now and pay maintenance and upkeep. So that's where the the expenses start eating into our profit. But it's looking good. you got to also add that onto this as well. But it's looking good. It's looking good. So it does slow down on the way back slightly. You can see it's now doing 23. And obviously, the more carriages I add to it, the slower it's also going to get as well. So that's also something that we need to kind of pay attention to. So those finances, they're eating into it, boys. They are eating into it. <laughs> so don't celebrate too early yet. Don't celebrate too early just yet. All right, train coming in. There should be like a lot here now. Yeah, there's like 400. We've got so much we can do on this. So... 
I don't know. I could have bought another couple of carriages to it, but I don't want it just yet. I just want to see where we're at on the finance side of things. So this is now heading back, boys. Travelling across this uh, fictional country of Australia. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Oof. Wait, fiction, non-fiction, did I say it right? I don't know. I don't know what's real life anymore. Is it even a real place? Is fiction facts and non-fiction non-facts? I think so. Uh, anyway, boys, finances. Those expenses are eaten into. They are eaten into it. But I think, uh, you know, overall, carogotically, I can't even say the word, uh, we are making huge amount of profit off this line. So that year has now ended, by the way. That year's now ended. So we are definitely going to add more carriages to this vehicle. So I'm going to edit it. We're going to add one, two, three, four. Maybe five. Ooh! I, could, I can add it where it's got a 50 capacity. I need 28,000, though. On no. Oh, oh, nearly, nearly, nearly. There we go. So this will be interesting right now. With how heavy it now is with all those carriages. It got to 23 miles on the incline on the hill. Let's see what it does this time round. It is starting to slow down. 27. 26. It got to 23 before it got over the hill. 22. 21. 20. Oh, no. It definitely slows down, doesn't it? It definitely slows down. 17. And then will it start bottoming out and then kind of increasing in? 18, yes. Right, glorious. We are making money on that line. I've now literally just doubled the amount of money it's going to make. So that is going to pay for a lot of expansions. I think the first thing we do is we upgrade all the vehicles on our two food routes. I think that's the first thing that we do once we start getting big money coming in the company. Not only will they be faster, but they will also uh, carry more and make more money. And then slowly start figuring out the inclines as well, because they're a bit of an issue. They really are. Oh, dearie me. Oh, dear. I want to go check out the train line again already. Is it on the way back yet? It's just leaving now. It's just leaving. So I just want to know how much it makes on the way back. So technically, it should make double. It should make double. So where it makes um, 300k, it should make 670k. That's what it should make, if my math is correct. If my math's correct, it should make that. So this is where we hit the incline again. But it should then speed down the hill. Should speed downhill at a constant 28 miles an hour because that's its top speed. <laughs> and we should get over here. So we'll get over here and wait for it. Get over here and wait for it, boys. And it will slow down coming up the hill as well again. But it's sticking at 28 right now. We'll see when it starts to slow down. I think it just naturally slows down anyway because we are approaching the station. So it's just going to do that by default anyway. So 670 is what I said. 670, yeah, my math was correct. That just puts a huge amount of money into our bank. Weirdly, we haven't made any... Oh, no, it's a new year. So look, literally, that just got at the end of the year, that train. Yeah, it literally just got there at the end of the year. That's crazy. Uh, in terms of revenue, then, on that year, forget the investment, but... All of a sudden, we've now got an extra line of revenue that's making double our road lines make. We've just crossed. Not only did we cross over the million, the 1.5 million threshold we've crossed as well. Right. Let's do some upgrades, boys. Let's do some upgrades. Where's Perf? The Perf is down here. So I reckon... I'll upgrade this line first. So cause it's, it's only got four vehicles on. So manage these. Replace these vehicles. Cargo-wise. Oh, they carry a certain type of cargo. The European ones, which is one more, one more mile an hour. One more capacity. 
There we go. Now, if I was to replace all of the perf vehicles with those, I'll need 848,000 big ones. That is ridiculous. That really is ridiculous. Now, I could technically wait for the train to make its approach. Where's the line? Which the train is on the way down, which that would give me enough. I'm replacing it with these ones, aren't I? It would give me enough to replace them all. It's getting more and more expensive as time goes on because these get more and more worthless. <laughs> That's just what happens, so I can't sell them for as much money. Now that train's coming all the way in. Once it gets here, I'll replace all of those. And at least the Perth ones are all upgraded. I don't know how much difference... It's the same mile an hour, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know how much difference the, the extra speed is going to do for us on the inclines. But um, that train's coming in right now. The, now I'm waiting for the train to actually buy something with the money. Now it just feels like it's taking forever to get over here. It does, doesn't it? It really does. Right, drop off the, the, uh, the stuff. Upgrade. As I've done that, a new vehicle will now arise. Right, I'm completely lost to where I am. Where am I going? I'm over here. Right, there we go, boys. We have a little bit more speed on the go. They can now do 12, an extra mile an hour. Doesn't seem like much, but, you know, extra mile an hour over time does add up. Also carries a fifth good. So that line will make more money in general. Very exciting. Very exciting. Now, I've got to apply that also to the Portland route as well. Which does get super expensive now when you think of it. Um, the Portland food line has how many vehicles? Eight. If I was to replace the eight vehicles with them, nearly quarter of a million. Nearly a quarter of a million, boys. Which we could do. But the expenses dive down. Now when the expenses hit, the maintenance and the upkeep, it hits us harder now because we're also paying for a train as well. So that does hit us a little bit harder. So it's a case of now waiting for the train to drop off the goods again. That's all you're pretty much doing. I'm now waiting for... for I mean, I never would have thought I could replace my whole line of vehicles. But now I can. But I'm now beholden for on the, when the train delivers. But it just goes to show you right now how much of a leap forward we've now done. A huge leap forward. With that train line. Where is it? Australia is so big. I, c I can't figure out where I am and where I'm meant to be going. That's how big it is. That's how big it is right now. Right, any vehicles carrying five on the way down? You're carrying five. You're carrying four. So you're the first fifth one. So they used to make 15,000 drop off when they're coming from all the way over by the grain side. Uh, 10,000 is the 8,000 run just there. Would you carry a five? Yeah, it's 16,000. Right, watching you. Is it? Yeah, it's now 16,000, isn't it? No, it's 20,000. Oh my god. Yes, please. Yes, please. Right, has the train stopped off yet? It literally just has. Which gives me enough money. Where am I? To do the first run of our Portland food. Ooh. Portland grain's looking a little bit low. To the point where they're now going back with nothing on board. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. Same with the food over here as well. We might be coming to the point where we need to start thinking about how this is now working for us. Interesting. Anyway, we will upgrade the food lines on these vehicles. So replace them. 
with these bad boys. But I don't think I'll be able to afford to do the, the Portland Grain. No, you need 624,000 big ones. Which could be done, it just depends. Oh, there we go. Done it. Done it, done it, done it, done it, done it. So we'll take a look as time goes on whether that was a good idea or not to upgrade all the vehicles. Because it does put extra pressures and demands on these. It could be a case I need to upgrade this to have a second section here. To split the two goods from the two platforms. How much would that cost me to do? To do another cargo side. 28,000 big ones. Yeah, I don't have the money for that just yet. I really don't. 28,000, boys. Yikes. Yikes, 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 yikes. I don't think we're doing it anytime soon, either. How, hold on. How is that? Making money dropping off. Is it delivering food here? Weirdly, yes. It look because there's, there's one house there or one commercial building. Oh no, there's a couple. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, that, that's pretty cool. I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. That's actually pretty cool. Right, anyway, configure. No, still can't afford it. Right, we'll do it next episode, boys, when we've got more money. We'll do it next episode when we've got more money, but. Expect to see us paying more upkeep and maintenance costs, but also expect us to be making more cash, like how that money just came in right there. So we should be pushing it back up. We should see some big increases shortly with now the, the ability of the vehicles to carry more goods. Um, we'll keep our eyes peeled on what's going on with them. We'll try and reduce the inclines next episode as well, as well as trying to fine tune them a bit more and expanding our train line as well to i mean i think initially getting multiple trains back and forth here first before we move on to an additional line because there's a lot of goods at this platform there is a lot of goods so multiple trains will first be the answer they will first be the answer before we extend it but um yes expect it to now have a rapid rise on the amount of money that we do make guys hope you enjoyed it. if you did smash that like button down below and until next time i will see you all soon so good bye